Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Nasser. Welcome those of you who are here tonight with us and those of you who watch our program uh, online. We have the pleasure of having our guest speaker, Zadik Tisahan, tonight, and I will make the formal introduction shortly. Let me make first few announcements. Um, so on this Saturday, November 12, um, at 10.30, Eastern Time, we are going to have an in-person children's event at this building, part of our new uh, program, the Ipen Kim for Children. Mary Dervartanian will tell the story of Hovanes Tumanian's Bochad Arvesa, the fox that lost uh, its tail in Armenian, followed by a fun activity. So you're welcome to join us um, this Saturday, and please note that children must be accompanied by an adult. And uh, for other upcoming events, uh, please visit the NASA website, nasser.org, or get on our mailing list and follow NASA on social media for news um, about the many other NASA programs upcoming between now and the end of the year. We would like to hear from you, so please do send us your feedback, positive or not so positive. We love to hear from you. Um, I also would like to urge you to become a NASA member if you are not uh, a member already in order for you to support our programs. Uh, now I will make the introduction. Our speaker tonight is making his first appearance at NASA, and we are always pleased to welcome someone new to speak to us. Um, in this case, we have not only a new speaker, but rather a new topic as well, the Armenians of Abkhazia, identification and self-identification in, in the early 21st century. And I'm pleased to say that my former colleague's wife, Anya, who is from Abkhazia, is actually watching the program right now. <laughs> um, so tonight's program takes place under the auspices of Nasser Kalus Kulpekian Foundation uh, series on contemporary Armenian issues. And we thank the Kulpekian Foundation for their continuing support of our pr contemporary programs. Zadik Tisserand <laughs> received his bachelor degree in political science in 2018 and his master's degree in political theory 2020 from Sciences Po, Paris. His master's thesis based on six months of field research in the de facto state of Abkhazia examined the political mobilization of Abkhazian Armenians within that ethnic democracy. He continues to study the geopolitics of the South Caucasus. An article on the Persian Gulf Black Sea Transit Corridor is forthcoming in the academic journal Confluence Méditerranée. Please give him a warm welcome. So, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, being here. Thank you also. Um, for the presentation. And I also want to thank the NASA, the NASA for this opportunity uh, to talk about uh, uh, the topic of my um, master research, uh, uh, the Abkhazian Armenians. Don't fear the microphone. So, okay. So today we're gonna talk about the Abkhazian Armenians. Uh, how do they self-identify in this de, de facto uh, ethnic democracy? and uh, how they are identified by the Abkhazian state and um, how they use, sorry, <laughs> how they use this uh, identity uh, to claim uh, maybe a better place in the Abkhazian society. So um, the Ar Abkhazian Armenian come from uh, the northeastern Turkey the red uh, regions on the, on the map, Janik, Ordu, Trabzon, Riz, and Ardvin. Uh, although Ardvin and Armenians do not self-identify as Hamshen, since they speak uh, the sub-dialect closer, closer to the Eastern Armenian, and uh, they were 50% Catholic in the past also. They uh, all arrived uh, during two uh, waves uh, of immigration. So the first one, uh, happened uh, between the years uh, 1870 and 1880 uh, with the campaigns of forced Islamization in the uh, Ottoman Empire and uh, also 
in the scope of the uh, population exchanges uh, that were occurring between the Russian Empire and the uh, Ottoman Empire. Uh, and the second wave of immigration uh, happened during the Armenian Genocide, uh, so uh, in 19, uh, from 1915. Um, so all these groups, all these uh, Hamshian Armenians, they speak languages, Hamshian uh, Armenians, that belong to the regions, uh, their region of origin. So for example, the dialect spoken by uh, Hamshian Armenians uh, coming from Janik will not be the same as the one uh, coming uh, from Ordu region. Uh, and I will give you an example uh, to give you a, a sense of their dialect. I will make you listen to uh, some, a piece in Armenian, oh sorry, in the Armenian school of Gumista. So this one was of the sub-dialects of Hamshin Armenian uh, spoken in Abkhazia. Uh, I don't, to be honest, I don't remember which one it is, but uh, it was just to give you a sense of it. Uh, Sorry, yeah. <laughs> um, so, just I also wanted to give you some uh, key dates of the recent uh, uh, history of Abkhazia. So, as you can read, this, uh, during the 16th century, the Ottoman Empire seizes uh, uh, partly Abkhazia. Um, during the mid 19th century, the Russian Empire seizes uh, Abkhazia. Uh, but uh, not without resistance, which leads to mass deportations that Abkhazian call uh, Mahajirdva, um, deportations uh, to Anatolia, but also to the Middle East uh, of uh, Abkhazians and also of Northern Caucasian populations. Uh, and in March 1921, the Red Army seizes, seizes uh, Sukhumi, capital of Abkhazia, and there uh, begins the Soviet era of Abkhazia, which will end in uh, 1993 with the end of the war in Abkhazia between uh, Georgians and Abkhazians. So, so also, uh, to give you, to show you a bit of the, the so the multinationality of this, uh, the Soviet Republic of Abkhazia. So I told you about the mass deportations that occurred uh, in the 19th century in Abkhazia. Uh, actually, what happened is that um, during the, the Caucasian Wars in, uh, in Abkhazia, uh, the, the Abkhazians were uh, uh, fighting alongside uh, Ottomans against uh, Russians, uh, and uh, they did it uh, several times. And, which led, in fact, the Russian empires to perceive Abkhazian population as a guilty nation. Um, and uh, they then deported them. Between 30 and 50,000 people were deported to, uh, Middle East, to the Middle East and to Anatolia. And in exchange of it, the Ottoman Empire also deported the populations they perceived as not loyal to the Ottoman uh, authorities. These were Greeks, Armenians, uh, Estonians, and uh, other uh, minorities. Uh, and there uh, um, occurred then uh, population exchanges, in fact. And this led to the society you can uh, see on this um, table, uh, a multinational society, Abkhazia, in which Abkhazians are not even making the majority of the population, only constituting uh, 27 0.8% uh, of the population in 1926, five years after the beginning of the Soviet era of Abkhazia. Uh, Armenians then constituted, as you can see, 12.8% of the population, and Georgians 336 um, And uh, so due to the multinational character of the Soviet Republic of Abkhazia, the right was given in the constitution of the Soviet Republic of Abkhazia for each community to uh, develop their mother tongues uh, and their cultures. Uh, as you can see, it is written in the, in the, in the constitution. What was the tool for this? Uh, these were the uh, multinational uh, schools. Uh, the, sorry, the national schools. Uh, I will uh, tell you more about it later. Uh, I will not also talk a lot about the Soviet history of Abkhazia since, uh, I mean, we have a lot to discuss, uh, so maybe during the question time. But as you can see, uh, due to, um, 
due to demographic engineering during the, the 20th century, you can see that uh, from 1926 to 1989, the, popul the demography changed a lot. Uh, so Abkhazians only constituted in 1989 17.8% of the population, while they were uh, the titular nationality of the Soviet autonomous uh, uh, Soviet Republic of Abkhazia. Uh, Georgians were making up to 45.7% of the population, Armenians 14.6%. Uh, and you can see uh, the multinational character of the Republic stayed uh, during these 70 years of um, Soviet uh, era. So what was the tool, what is the tool of, what was the tool of uh, this, um, the right to freely develop the mother tongue and culture? These were the, the national schools that still exist, as you can see. The Armenian school of Gumista, for example, was celebrating this year its 110th uh, anniversary. Uh, and uh, there are multiple, uh, several uh, proofs of uh, the long history of uh, these schools. Uh, there are many, I mean, many schools in Abkhazia, many Armenian schools that were founded right after the ar arrival of Armenians. Uh, that, um, that means uh, in, uh, at the end, in the end of the 19th century, which, mean that, uh, which means that today these schools are 100, well, 100 uh, uh, years old. Um, so now, nowadays, how does look the demography in Abkhazia? Uh, so during the, the war, the war that was won by uh, Abkhazians uh, in 1993, um, uh, ethnic cleansing occurred against the Georgian population, Mingrelian population of Abkhazia, and the half of the population, which means uh, 250,000 people, were had to, to, to escape from Abkhazia, uh, or, uh, and they major, in majority went to Mingrelia and to Zugdidi a city in majority. Uh, but you can see that in two, uh, 2020, the demography has radically uh, changed. Uh, Georgians are only, um, only uh, 43,000 uh, people, but, and Armenians, uh, which, uh, who were constituting 14.6% uh, population in 1989, are now constituting 17%, um, which is underestimated, uh, according to many experts. And Abkhazians are now constituting the half of the population, while they were constituting only 17% of the population in 1989. So what is the distribution of Armenians, uh, Abkhazian and Armenians, in, um, in Abkhazia, the facto Abkhazia? So you can see that in many places uh, on the map, uh, Armenian Abkhazians, Abkhazian Armenians are constituting more than 85% of the population. These are the dark yellow uh, zones, areas uh, on the map. Uh, the, the Armenian population is mainly um, present in three regions, so in the north, to the north, uh, Gagra region, uh, then Gudauta region, then Suhumi region, Suhum region. Yeah. And um, these are the regions uh, in which uh, Armenians are concentrated. Um, and that is uh, uh, why Armenians are considered a force during uh, elections in Abkhazia. So, now I will talk about the organization uh, the of the community of Abkhazia, uh, the community of Armenians of Abkhazia. So, uh, this is the only Armenian organization in the de facto Abkhazia. Uh, it was created in 2004 after the merging of three uh, Armenian organizations, Kurunk, uh, which was a politicized organization in, in favor of the Abkhazian independence, uh, Mashtots, which was a uh, cultural and uh, neutral uh, organization, and Hamshen, who was also cultural, I mean, focused only on culture and neutral in the conflict, opposing Georgians and Abkhazians. Kurunk was chaired by Galus Trabizonian, uh, who uh, after the war became a war hero, uh, and Khachik Minasian, who was uh, the director of uh, Normian school uh, in Abkhazia. And they are now, since 2011, um, rotating at the head of the on, at the head of the Armenian organization of Abkhazia. Um, what can I say? Yes, and since 2011, we can el elaborate uh, more about this aspect 
further, but uh, after, but um, since 2011, the uh, Armenian organization of Abkhazia is neutral in Abkhazian politics since uh, they have, uh, they had many problems uh, uh, with the Abkhazian authorities uh, who which wanted to interfere in uh, the intra, uh, the processes in the, in the, uh, into the organization. Uh, so since 2011, there is a firm neutral position that is re uh, affirmed in the uh, community of Armenians of Abkhazia. So what is their main task if they are not uh, dealing with politics? So uh, they, their main task is to, uh, to develop the uh, Armenian schools in Abkhazia. Uh, there are 24 Armenian schools in Abkhazia, uh, national Armenian schools. Um, in 1992, there were 52. Uh, which means that half of uh, it has closed. This is due to the immigration to Russia, but also to the war that made a lot of Armenians escape from, uh, from the region. Um, and this figure, 24 schools, uh, represents about 16% of the, the schools uh, of Abkhazia, which, is, which in fact reflects the, um, the demography of Armenians in Abkhazia if uh, we rely on the censuses. Um, so yes, what does the Armenian uh, community, the organization of Armenians in Abkhazia, they are, uh, they are contributing to the reparations of these schools. Uh, they are bringing te textbooks uh, from Sochi uh, Armenian textbooks. They are being also an intermediary uh, with, with Abkhazian authorities, uh, and also they also uh, make the schools participate in the events of the community. And you will see later that these schools are central for the uh, organization of Armenians in Abkhazia. Very central. Very central. Um, also something else. Yes, Th these schools they are public, which means that the salaries. Oops, sorry. The salaries of yes, the salaries of the staff of the schools is paid by the state of Abkhazia, uh, which has also some implications, as you as you will see. Um, so, uh, what is interesting with these schools is that, as you can see on the picture there, with the Abkhazian flag, Armenian flag, and Russian flag, you have uh, concurrent uh, identities at play in these schools. And this is what is interesting uh, for us, and uh, was interesting for me in my research as well. Uh, so in an Armenian school in Abkhazia, for example, you have sev several uh, elements of Armenian national culture, uh, important personalities, Arat Masis, the flag, you have the Armenian alphabet at the entrance of the uh, school, Andranik and uh, Ovanes Tumanian, they are named after important Armenian uh, personalities. So you have the Avedik Isaacian school, Ovanes Tumanian school, and uh, many others. Uh, you even have uh, picture symbols of the uh, Artsakh Republic uh, and other uh, symbols of the Armenian culture. It's present. And uh, actually, this, the history of Armenia and the literary Armenian language are taught uh, in these schools. Um, but you also have uh, symbols of Abkhazia, so Abkhazian flag, also in Abkhazian alphabet, uh, because since 2007, the uh, teaching of the Abkhazian language is mandatory in uh, every, every school of Abkhazia. You have the, there is the, the, the picture of the first president of Abkhazia, de facto Abkhazia, Vladislav Arzimba. There are the pictures also of the fallen soldiers during the war uh, of independence, as they say in Abkhazia, and uh, other symbols, as you can see, on the drawings of the children. So uh, Abkhazians, while letting the national, school in Abkhazia, national schools in Abkhazia being free, be free to develop their mother tongues and culture, want to have a certain control over it at the same time, at the same time because as we can, see, as we will see later, the Abkhazian uh, nation uh, and Abkhazian people, uh, at least their uh, elites, um, fear of uh, afraid of disappearance, uh, and this is very interesting uh, in this topic. Uh, very in interesting aspect. Sorry. Um, so yes, but you don't. There is Abkhazian identity and Armenian identity are not the only one identities that are mobilized in the Armenian schools uh, of Abkhazia. There is also the 
school Amshen identity. This is an identity that is uh, mobilized during uh, artistic events, uh, where, when, it's, when children have to read poems, when they have to dance, when they, uh, when they have to, when they do theater, when they play theater as well as you can, as you saw. So this is a differently mobilized, mobilized uh, identity. It's a core identity mobilized in that way. Uh, since uh, Hamshen subdialects are not written, that's also why uh, that's literary Armenian that's uh, taught in these schools, uh, a language that is sometimes foreign to the uh, Armenian kids of Abkhazia, since they don't speak this language except at school, uh, what they speak uh, in the uh, in the community life, but also in the family unit. You hear me well? Sorry. Uh, in the family unit, it's Hamshen language. It's not Armenian language. And Armenian, sorry, literary Armenian language. And the Hamshen subdialects and the uh, literary Armenian are not often mutually comprehensible. And that's why uh, this national Armenian culture is sometimes foreign for the, ch the, the, the kids. Um, so yes. What's, but, uh, uh, yes, so I said, so uh, this is, uh, um, the option identity is mobilized during uh, events um, like this, but also in the community life. Uh, <laughs> In the food, uh, in the dances, this is a wedding actually, a celebration of a wedding. Uh, and during this kind of event, you can hear uh, Hamshen uh, songs, uh, you can see Hamshen dances, uh, this is Hamshen food. Uh, so this is a different culture somehow. And this is a, a culture that is mobilized sometimes at school, but uh, and, uh, in, the com uh, in the community life. Uh, you only have fragments of what's called, what could be called the Armenian national culture. And this is interesting to see. But um, the Hamshen identity has also its uh, symbols. And we, this is one of, uh, one, one of them. This is the uh, na an aerial, uh, aerial view of the village of Mutsara uh, in the uh, region of uh, Budauta. This is the oldest Armenian village. I mean, this is yeah, the oldest village of uh, Armenian village in Abkhazia, founded in 1879 uh, by uh, Armenians from uh, the region of Janik in uh, in uh, in uh, the Ottoman Empire. Uh, so it was founded in 1879 uh, and the documents written by Edmond Pilosian so uh, an, an inhabitant of inhabitant of uh, the village of Mutsara told the arrival of 400 uh, armenians uh, from Janik uh, who escaped the persecutions and forced islamization um, and to uh, so at the time uh, the shorelines of Abkhazia were swamps so it was bringing malaria and uh, other diseases, so it was not uh, um, good to settle on, on these shores. That's why they, these Armenians uh, climbed the mountain and uh, found uh, springs, found also a source, the source of a river, and found also the empty huts of the people who got deported by the Russians, Cherkes and Abkhazians. Uh, that's uh, where they settled. And uh, before the war in uh, before the, the war uh, in 1992, there were 1,000 inhabitants in the village of Mutsara. Now there is only 300 because of emigration and uh, because of so the war made a lot of them ex escape. Uh, this village before 2004 was not the symbol it is today. That's since 2004 that the organization of Armenians of Abkhazia organizes the anniversary every year of this village. Uh, this is a means for them to bring together the community around uh, the symbol of the arrival. This is really proper to the, 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 the Hamshen memory uh, in Abkhazia. And you, there are uh, Abkhazian officials who come during this event to give speeches uh, and uh, the leaders of the community as well. 
Um, yes. And this is uh, yeah, mainly symbolical uh, date since uh, before 1879, many Armenians were actually going to Abkhazia to trade, maybe to settle, but so, but this is may, maybe the, the, only, the, the first mono-ethnic Armenian village to, to have been created in Abkhazia. Uh, one other occasion during which the Hamshian uh, culture is celebrated is the uh, Hamshian festival. Uh, it's uh, organized uh, in early November to symbolize the traditional Hamshian harvest, harvest uh, festival. Uh, and it's organized since 2016 uh, by the uh, Armenian community of Abkhazia, the, the organization. Uh, and it's, it aims at, ce at celebrating the Hamshian culture of Abkhazia. So you can see dances. Th these are Abkhazian officials. Uh, so Hamshian dances, Hamshian songs, Hamshian dishes, uh, Hamshian yeah, um, food, and yeah, so many things. So this is the core identity of Armenians of Abkhazia. But what the, the aim also of the organization of Armenians in Abkhazia uh, is to bring our Hamshian Armenians to the national Ar Ar Armenian culture. Uh, the first means of it is uh, the Armenian school, since there is taught the uh, Armenian literary language, but uh, many events uh, go uh, this way as well, uh, just like the Festival of Friendship, to Friendship, sorry, Friendship of Peoples, um, which is uh, organized uh, since, uh, wait, since 10 years approximately, and it's intended to be more representative of, of a broader Armenian culture, in fact. Uh, and it's, it aims also at celebrating the uh, arrival uh, of the Armenians in Abkhazia, where the host people of Abkhazia, Abkhazians, hosted uh, the Armenian uh, people. This is part of the whole narrative, narrative that is uh, brought during this kind of event. Uh, on this occasion, the 24 Armenian schools perform Armenian dances and songs uh, for the event. For, uh, in 2018, the president of the Republic of Abkhazia, Raoul Khajimba, uh, delivered a speech. Um, and it's fully part of the, the strategy of the leaders of the community to uh, convince Armenian families to send their, ch their children to Armenian schools. Uh, because this is a, a problem today. today. But what about another really important uh, symbol of Armenian identity, church? So for 70 uh, years, the church in Abkhazia, the Armenian church in Abkhazia was absent uh, because of the repression uh, during the Soviet era. Uh, it was ferocious, it was uh, horrible, in the, and, and uh, then the religious practice of Armenians in Abkhazia uh, got erased, basically. And uh, when Echmiadzin sent uh, their first priest since 70 years in the beginning of 90s. The religious practice in Abkhazia was uh, close to zero, nothing. Um, but the, nowadays, so Ter Setrak Aznaburian on the, on the, on the right, uh, who arrived in 2011, tries to, uh, to put back the religious practice uh, and belief as well uh, in, in Abkhazia. Um, which is difficult since the many uh, Armenian Abkhazians um, got used to uh, baptize their to baptize their children to in the Russian the Russian um, churches, uh, but also and also to I mean they, they forgot uh, the, the religious practice. So this is a huge job for for Tersetrakas Navurian. Uh, so he came to Abkhazia, uh, he, came, he arrived in Abkhazia in 2011, and he inaugurated the uh, only Armenian church uh, of Abkhazia in 2013. Um, so, so this is a, a slow uh, but uh, growing phenomenon. Uh, so in nine years, Tersetrakas Navurian has baptized uh, almost about 2,800 Armenians. And each year, he uh, organizes at, in, uh, in the church the wedding of 30 to 40 Armenians. Uh, so it's slow, but uh, it's growing. And it's growing, yes, every year. So you will see now um, the vi a video of the, the cross being raised on the only Armenian church in Abkhazia. 
Oops. So the, the, the Armenian Church of Abkhazia is located in Gagra, in the north of uh, Abkhazia, next uh, to the, the Black Sea. Uh, and so what about now the Armenian intelligentsia of Abkhazia? Oops, sorry. So uh, it was significant under the Soviet era. Many uh, cultural uh, organiz associations were, had been created, like the Down on the Black Sea, which was a literary uh, union created to celebrate the Armenian identity in Abkhazia. Um, now, unfortunately, due to the war and to emigration, uh, many, uh, many uh, left Abkhazia, many uh, members of this intelligentsia, uh, literary intelligentsia. And today, the main representative of this intel intelligentsia is Artavaz Saritsyan, um, who is a member of the Union of Writers of, uh, of Armenia, uh, of the Union of Writers of Abkhazia, but also of the Union of Journalists of Abkhazia. Why is he, so now he's a poet, uh, and uh, he, uh, he, his work is mainly dedicated to uh, the Hamshian Literary uh, Magazine. Uh, I will show it to you. So this is the newspaper that produced by Artavaz Saretian in Abkhazia. It's a bilingual, um, bilingual uh, newspaper in uh, Russian and in, in Armenian, literary Armenian. Um, and it was created in 1991 uh, for the Armenian community. Uh, and today, it's part of his main activity. Um, the, aims, the aim of this uh, newspaper is to uh, promote good inter-ethnic uh, relations uh, in Abkhazia, and to uh, bring together the community uh, of Armenians in Abkhazia, around the literary Armenian, but also around uh, main the symbols. As you know. There is Andranik, there, there are many histories uh, in this newspaper. newspaper. Um, uh, so it, in 1991, it was printed uh, in the amount of 5,000 copies. Now it's only 1,000. Uh, it's it's, uh, it's uh, distributed uh, free of charge in uh, every Armenian school in Abkhazia, which shows the, the, the phenomenon, the, the process, I mean, the, the, the objective of the leaders of this Armenian community to put uh, at the earth of the identitarian mobilization the Armenian schools in Abkhazia. Um, so now we'll talk, I, I will talk about the, the war memory in Abkhazia. Uh, which is actually a shared uh, memory among Abkhazians and Armenians. Why? Uh, you will uh, see it uh, right after. So it's, the war is in every mind, every single uh, mind in Abkhazia. Uh, it's printed in the, uh, on the environment, but it's in every memorials or everywhere. Uh, so war is everywhere. And I mean, I remember, for example, uh, drinking uh, alcohol with young teenagers uh, in Abkhazia, 17 years old uh, uh, guys who, before drinking, would uh, pour uh, their alcohol on the ground in memory of the fallen soldiers uh, during the war of independence uh, of Abkhazia, which shows uh, the, 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 waves, the weight of uh, this memory in uh, the minds of even of the youth. Um, but yes, so this is uh, the war in Abkhazia between 1992 uh, and 1993 is shared uh, for Armenian, Armenian uh, and Abkhazians. Why? Uh, because the Armenians fought alongside Abkhazians during this war against the Georgians. So now you will see the, uh, picture, uh, the uh, video of the first president of the de facto Republic of Abkhazia, Vladislav Arzimba, speaking uh, of, about the, this uh, the Bagramian battalion uh, that was formed by the Abkhazian Armenians during the war. This is in Russian, this is very short. Который бы носил имя выдающегося полководца времен 
Отечественной войны маршала Баграмяна. So, it was the Armenian uh, during the so the Armenians fought alongside the Abkhazians during the war uh, in Abkhazia. Uh, <clears throat> this is this was not um, this is, this was not sure certain uh, at the beginning since Armenians and uh, had good relations with Abkha uh, Georgians and Abkhazians both. What uh, made their participation? Uh, in the war decisive uh, was the, were the, the attacks of the Georgian uh, soldiers on the Armenian villages, uh, and like the village of Labra, uh, Gumista, Tsebelda. These were attacked uh, by the Georgian forces during the war at the beginning, and uh, this, uh, this, this made uh, the Armenians of Abkhazia decide to, at first, defend their villages, but also to help the Abkhazians uh, win this war. So uh, this took actually six months uh, to happen, to occur, uh, since the unification of the Bagremian Battalion uh, uh, happened on the, in February 1993. So uh, yeah, six months after the beginning of the war. Um, uh, yes, and it was, uh, of course, named after the Soviet Marshal uh, Ivan Bagramian, uh, and uh, it was constituted, constituted of 1,500 men, 99% Armenian, and they lost uh, 242 uh, men during the war. Uh, and now, I mean, after, as the result of the war, about 20 Armenians from this battalion were awarded the title of Heroes of Abkhazia. Um, now I'll show you a video of one of the volunteers, Leonid Kosian, singing a song in Hamshen. Беги вахтеуш, герта сашкарис, кянкум чешешкарис, херовелярис, беги вахтеуш, сашкарис, сиравар им сера. <laughs> so um, these these were Armenians from the Armenian battalion, the Bagreman battalion, uh, and so the participation of Armenians in the war in Abkhazia uh, is one of the reasons why uh, one of the reason why uh, Armenians were granted a better place than other uh, minorities in the ethnic Abkhazian ethnic democracy after the war. Uh, and this is also why this the war is a shared memory for the Armenian and Abkhazian uh, my, communities in Abkhazia. Uh, one other aspect of this shared memory is the trauma. Why? Because, uh, as I told you, uh, the Ab Abkhazians were, uh, I mean, deported to, uh, middle, to the Middle East, but also to Anatolia during the 19th century by the Russian Empire. Uh, this is the Mahajirtva. This is celebrated, I mean, no, not celebrated, but this is uh, the, the, the anniversary of the Mahajirtva. It uh, happens every 21st of May. Um, each, it, uh, it has the symbolic, uh, uh, symbolic date of 1864, uh, but it happened during the, the whole uh, second half of the 19th century, this uh, Mahajirtva mass deportations. Um, this is, uh, so the commemoration happens next to the monument of the Mahajirs in Sukhumi, Sukhum, uh, and uh, these are some images of it. Uh, yes, um, and this event holds uh, uh, an important place in the Abkhaz uh, memo collective memory. But the Armenians also present during this commemoration as a, a sign of, of um, respect. Just uh, like the Abkhazians during uh, the commemorations of the, the commemoration of the Armenian genocide uh, in Abkhazia, uh, 
which uh, happened that way. So they, they throw uh, roses in the Black Sea uh, in memory of the people who came by the sea uh, in, uh, in the end of the 19th century, but also the beginning of the uh, 20th century. So, and the Abkhazians also commemorate uh, their trauma that way because they also were sent uh, by the sea to the same coast. So this is, this is this, I mean, these two commemorations show the same uh, symbols. And this is why it is somehow a shared memory for both, uh, both uh, populations, both peoples. Um, but the Armenians, uh, uh, contrary to the Abkhazians, do not have a monument uh, in Abkhazia to commemorate uh, the Armenian genocide. Um, that's why they uh, commemorate they commemorate it that way uh, next to the Mahajir embankment, as they say, uh, but also next to the same monument than uh, the Abkhazian one, the one that you the, the one that you saw right before, uh, this one. Um, so yes, and this uh, this whole uh, narrative of Armenians uh, escaping from the uh, Islamiz forced Islamization in the Ottoman Empire, uh, uh, escaping to Abkhazia, also leads to one main, uh, one, of the, one of the reasons uh, which explain the, the place of uh, Armenians in Abkhazia, which is the, st the, guest, uh, the story of the initial hospitality. This is a narrative that is present in every uh, discourse of uh, the uh, Abkhazian uh, officials, like in this one uh, that was done by uh, the president, uh, current president of the de facto Republic of Abkhazia, Astan Jania. Uh, so the Armenians found salvation in Abkhazia. Our people sheltered and helped people who got into trouble to survive. Representatives of the Armenian diaspora gratefully serve Abkhazia, which has become their second homeland. And this is interesting to note, uh, this uh, sentence, this, this, this word, second homeland, because what the Armenians uh, in Abkhazia uh, have is uh, somehow a guest state status, which is part of uh, the whole, um, mm, the whole uh, I mean, this is a phenomenon that uh, uh, is also uh, um, that we can see, that we can uh, see in, in Georgia as well, which is a multi-ethnic uh, society. Uh, Georgia also uh, has this narrative of guest peoples and uh, host people, Georgians. Uh, this is also present in Abkhazia, and this explains the secondary uh, place of Armenians in Abkhazia as well. And this also explains the very nature of the, the political Abkhazian system, the ethnic democracy. Uh, of which I will, I will talk right now. Uh, this and this also leads the Armenians in Abkhazia to constantly prove their loyalty to the Abkhazian uh, host people, and this is something uh, the uh, leaders of the community want would like to change also. Uh, so, right after the, the war in 1993 was uh, created in Abkhazia uh, uh, an ethnic democracy. Um, it's, um, so it is deployed through uh, a principle of exclusivity for the Abkhazian group, um, it direct at the presidential level, as you can see uh, in the Article 49 of the Constitution of Abkhazia. Uh, only a person of Abkhazian nationality, nationality in Abkhazia means ethnicity, since your nationality is written on your passport. So only a person of Abkhazian nationality uh, and speaking the, uh, the Abkhazian language can be elected uh, president of Abkhazia. So this is the, the direct, uh, direct uh, uh, way of Abkhazians to, uh, of Ab Abkhazian minority, minority people to control the institutions in Abkhazia. But it's, it's also uh, indirect at the parliamentary level uh, since uh, there has been a constant uh, uh, underrepresentation of the other minorities than Abkhazian uh, in the parliament. Um, for example, nearly after the 2017 uh, elections in Abkhazia, only 9% of the uh, parliament was non-Abkhazian. 
This parliament is constituted of 35 uh, MPs. Only three MPs were uh, non abrasian actually they were Armenians. Uh, whereas, while the Abrasian population in Abrasia only constitutes 50% of the population. Uh, so, yes, I didn't talk much about the, the multinational character of the Abrasian society after the war. You have to know that uh, now the main uh, minorities in, in Abrasia are the Abrasian, 50%, uh, and Georgian, 70%, Ab uh, Armenian, 17%, and Russians, 10%. So, what uh, you could see during the Soviet era with uh, Ossetians, uh, es uh, Estonians, Polish, Greeks has disappeared after the war. Um, yes. So the Armenians are, can't be represented at the presidential, presidential level in Abkhazia, but they're also underrepresented at the parliamentary level. Uh, a thing that they accept, though, I mean, in the official speeches, since they are the guest people. And according to this narrative that founds, that is the basis of this whole uh, political system, <clears throat> the guest people should not try to um, take the, uh, the seat of the host people. Um, what, so, so yes, uh, one of the main obstacles also for, oops, sorry, one of the main obstacles of also uh, for an affiliation of Armenians under the Abkhazian um, national uh, uh, symbols, I would say, uh, is the fact that Abkhazia is under, uh, depend, uh, is, um, wait, sorry, uh, is um, highly dependent on Russia. And uh, this is uh, noticeable, uh, especially since 2008, after the Georgian-Russian war, uh, when Russia, uh, first of all, recognized the independence of Abkhazia, but then offered Russian citizenship to Abkhazians. In 2007, a study uh, revealed that 85 to 90 percent of the population of Abkhazia hold uh, uh, Russian citizenship. So you can imagine uh, how, I mean, how this figure is today. Uh, I, I think I'm not mistaken if, I, if I'm saying that 100 percent of the population in Abkhazia holds the Russian citizenship. Since the situation in Abkhazia is that bad, with uh, energy speaking, they have many cuts of, in, uh, of electricity, uh, due to crypto mining and other causes, but uh, they also there is also no work, uh, so not any work. So they have to go to Russia to find work, to especially Armenians, uh, since uh, a huge um, population of I mean, a lot of Armenians uh, have emigrated to the cities like Adler, Krasnodar, uh, cities like this, uh, where Armenians are also Hamshen, so they have family ties uh, also to these Russian cities, which is a novel incentive to leave Abkhazia. Um, and there is also the risk of annexation uh, by Russia, uh, since many uh, elements of the, the daily life of, uh, in Abkhazia are, um, I mean, already almost Russian. For example, the, the currency used is the Russian ruble. The time is the one of Moscow. Uh, these stores sell mainly Russian products, and uh, the Russian investments in Abkhazia are Russian as well. Um, so yes, these are a lot of incentives for the Armenians to, and also to the, for the uh, Abkhazians to leave Abkhazia and to go uh, to set, uh, set, settle in, in Russia. Um, but well, even although there is this risk of annexation perceived by the Abkhazians, they do not want to, to be annexed, uh, and they showed it uh, at multiple uh, occasions, during multiple occasions. For example, uh, that's one of the reasons why they ban uh, the buying of property by foreigners in Abkhazia, because they are, they are afraid that the Russians would buy that many properties in Abkhazia, that the, the price of uh, estate would rise, but also that uh, Russians would um, go to live, go to Abkhazia to live. Oops, sorry, uh, and uh, change the demographic balance, and uh, which then would uh, lead maybe to uh, a referendum, referendum. Uh, so yes, 
But this uh, Russian problem also happens at the school level, since uh, Armenians, but also Abkhazians, see many more opportunities in Russia than in Abkhazia. They send their children to Russian and, Abkhaz uh, and Rus to Russian schools. Uh, and uh, that is the reason, one of the reasons why, uh, one of the reasons why the Armenian schools are closing, because more and more Armenian and Abkhazian parents send their children to Rus to Russian schools. To give you some statistics, um, in 2016, over of the 24,000 students in Abkhazia, 10,000 attended Russian schools, and in uh, 2007. 2017, sorry, 30% of the schools of schools of schools in Abkhazia were Russian, uh, while the Russian community in Abkhazia only constitutes 9% of the population, uh, which shows the problem. So yes, uh, I will conclude with uh, the means. I mean, how the Armenian community of in Abkhazia tries to uh, change this to to reverse this phenomenon. Um, so in this context, uh, they, Armenians want to give uh, a greater political weight uh, to the Armenian community in Abkhazia. Uh, they want to have more MPs in the parliament. They want to, the community to vote for, one on, to, for only one candidate during the presidential election to, to show that the Armenian uh, community in Abkhazia is a bloc. Uh, and also um, in order for the candidates, Abkhazian candidates, to go to the, toward the Armenian community and uh, res, uh, answer to their requests, because they have requests, especially uh, in regard to the discrimination against uh, Armenians in Abkhazia. But uh, the Armenians, the leaders of the community, also want to encourage the Armenians to stay in, in, to stay in Abkhazia and work there, and um, bringing together the community around uh, an identity and. Uh, a national Armenian identity supported by this Hamshian core identity is for them a means uh, to, um, to preserve the Armenian community uh, in Abkhazia. Um, and uh, that's why identity is fundamental uh, to keep the, alive the community. Uh, and uh, uh, it's not only um, identity in Abkhazia for the Armenians does not only have uh, um, uh, cultural meaning, it also has a deep uh, political meaning. And that's um, I what I wanted to, to tell you at the end of this presentation. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. <laughs> and uh, sorry for my pronunciation. <laughs> Uh, if you have any question, uh, don't hesitate. Thank you, Zarek. Thanks very much. Now we can take uh, questions, but unfortunately today we have some technical issues. We can't take questions from uh, online uh, uh, participants. So you, please. <laughs> yes. So thank you for your question. Uh, so uh, at first, the Armenians, I will show you the map. It will be easier. Could you repeat the question for those who are watching online and will see it later? Could you just repeat the question? I know that I'm asking a lot. Uh, me, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course. Uh, so Judy asked uh, where the, if I'm not mistaken, where the Armenians first arrived in Abkhazia. And uh, no? Ah, primary occup oh, sorry, I didn't hear. So what is their pre primary occupation in, uh, in Abkhazia, the Armenians? And uh, when they go to Russia, uh, with what, they, uh, what, they, what are they doing in Russia when they leave Abkhazia? So uh, since the, the Armenians in Abkhazia mainly live in rural, uh, rural uh, areas, uh, their uh, main, main occupation is uh, to farm, actually, and to farm and to grow uh, uh, tree fr fruit, uh, I mean, tree, uh, fruit trees, and uh, but also vegetables. Uh, before they were known for their tobacco, pro for their tobacco they produced because they, from Turkey, they brought 
many species of uh, tobacco, like the Samsung one, Trabuzon one, some species that were also growing in this subtropical uh, climate, under this uh, subtropical climate, climate, and they were very famous for this occupation during the Soviet era. And actually, uh, Mutsara, the Mutsara village, the, the first village uh, ever created in Abkhazia by Armenians, was very famous for it. And uh, I was told that uh, they were even selling their tobacco to Philip Morris uh, uh, during the Soviet Union. Uh, now, uh, so now they, unfortunately, many Armenians don't have uh, unemployed, uh, and they have to go to to Russia to uh, to work in restaurants, to work as taxis. Uh, but yes, this is a very difficult situation in Abkhazia uh, on this aspect. Yes. Um, so, so, is there any uh, is there any trade between Abkhazia? Thank you for the question. Is there any trade for between Abkhazia and Georgia? So, there is no trade between Abkhazia and, uh, and Georgia because, uh, I mean, uh, Georgia does not recognize the independence of uh, of Abkhazia. Uh, this is a really a live um, scarf uh, between the Georgian and Abkhaz peoples. Uh, very deeply rooted hate uh, between uh, both peoples since, um, since uh, yes, I mean, the question of the ethnic, ethnic cleansing of Georgian, the Georgian population in Abkhazia has not been solved yet. Uh, and on one side, on the Abkhazian side, it's, uh, it's totally rejected and uh, the, the Abkhazian authorities are saying that uh, they, they search for it. I mean, they, they are, the Abkhazians are not the guilty and the, the guilty ones. And on the uh, Georgian side, also these, uh, the people that got, uh, uh, that had to, to, to escape and people who also got killed uh, in Abkhazia during the war due to, uh, for their ethnicity are also used as a political uh, weapon. I mean, not weapon, but political tool also uh, during, for these negotiations, eventual potential negotiations between Georgia and Abkhazia. I mean, de facto Abkhazia. <clears throat> so there is no trade. There is, you can, when you go to, for example, in the south, to this is the Gali region, where the Georgian population uh, is concentrated. Um, they are really discriminated in the Abkhazian uh, society uh, for their ethnicity, for being a, a Mingrelian and a Georgian. Uh, I mean, Mingrelian is part of the Georgian f uh, ethnic family. Uh, they speak Mingrelian, which is also a language part of the uh, Georgian uh, ethnic family, but which is not mutually comprehensible between Georgians and Mingrelians. Um, and uh, and when, if you go to the bridge between, uh, between uh, de facto Abkhazia and, and Georgia, you can see a lot of traffic. And in fact, the people from the Georgian region of Gali go to Zugdidi, the, the first Georgian city, uh, to bring medicine to the to the region of Gali, so I mean we can't say it's trade, but uh, this is this shows the the situation of so of the Georgian population in uh, in Abkhazia, uh, who also Georgians who, who who don't have the the right to vote in uh, in uh, in Ge the ethnic demo Ge Abkhazian ethnic democracy since uh, they don't hold they they don't do not hold uh, Abkhazian passport since a few years. Uh, Yes, so this is a, not a good situation, I mean, very bad situation for the Georgians of Abkhazia. And yes, there is no trade between both countries. I mean, both, uh, de facto Abkhazia and Georgia. Yes. Are you allowed to marry? Between, for example, uh, Armenians and Georgians and, yes, uh, so all um, Armenians allowed to marry with other ethnicities. Um, yes, they are, of course, and it's, uh, although uh, after the war it was quite taboo, it was not possible, uh, it's more and more uh, uh, visible, so, and it's especially visible uh, between uh, Armenians and Russians, uh, a lot more than between uh, Armen Armenians and Abkhazians or even uh, Armenians and Georgians. Uh, this is a growing phenomenon, I would say, between uh, Armenians and Abkhazians, but the, the first uh, inter-ethnic, I would say, uh, uh, possibility I would say, of marriage between 
uh, Armenians, uh, with Armenians is with Russians. This is the, the first, uh, uh, yes, this is the most happening. Yes. Thank you very much. That was very informative. Uh, so I wonder, as far as I understand, I've been to Abkhazia actually, but I didn't know that the Armenians there are appreciating and prioritizing their ancient identity this much. So my question is about is the, how well they are connected to other Hemshin communities across the world. Thank you for your question. So, uh, do uh, the uh, Amshan Armenians of Abkhazia uh, still maintain uh, relations with the other Amshan communities uh, around the world? So, since uh, the Abkhazian Armenians escaped from the forced Islamization uh, in the Ottoman Empire, they have a really, uh, I would say, dark view on, uh, of, uh, of the uh, Amshan Armenians who stayed in the Ottoman Empire and converted to Islam. So uh, they do not have any relations uh, with them. Uh, um, although I was told that some, some of them uh, came to Abkhazia to visit these other Hamshian uh, communities. But this is not uh, a phenomenon. This is not a relation that is priority, priority uh, so, which is prior, priority for the leaders of the community, uh, of, for the leaders of the organization. Not at all, unfortunately. But, uh, they maintain really good relations with the Armenians of southern Russia, who are also Hamshen, who escaped during uh, the, the same events. Uh, and they have relations with them, uh, with some organizations uh, of uh, Krasnodar, Sochi, Adler, uh, especially, uh, and this is visible since um, these Russian Armenians, also Hamshen, uh, for a lot of them, uh, contributed uh, for the contributed to the uh, construction of the Armenian uh, Church of Gagra, the only one. They uh, and uh, many leaders of this uh, Armenian Abkhazian community said, told me that this would have the, this construction would not, would not have been possible without uh, the Hamshen Rus Armenians uh, in Russia, who uh, financially contributed to the construction. So yes, they have. Um, relations with them, but unfor unfortunately not with the ones uh, on the other side of the Black Sea. Um, yes. Yes, yeah, go for it. Yes. Um, I know this is from your, master, from your thesis. So what other aspects do you discuss in the thesis that you weren't able to discuss today? Uh -huh. So thank you for your question. So what other aspects of the of the research thesis uh, I didn't talk uh, speak uh, about? Uh, so in the in my so my work was dedicated to to the political mobilization of Abkhazian Armenians in uh, the ethnic democracy. So how politically do they mobilize? So. Um, I showed you, I think, I hope, uh, how identity is important in the scope of this mobilization. It's central. Uh, in my work, I, I speak uh, a lot more, I would say, about the Armenian schools and their role in this uh, mobilization. Uh, I, I, I cite a lot of uh, my interviewees uh, in, the, in this work, and it, I, would, I would like to have this, the quotes uh, since, uh, in their words, uh, these schools are s fundamental. The main, um, to preserve these schools is fundamental, since for them, for the leaders of the community, uh, they noticed that the Armenians that went to, that were going to the Russian schools were losing the, 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 the link. Uh, toward the, the community, toward the events, toward the, their uh, Armenianness somehow. Uh, they also noticed that the Armenians going to Russia, to Adler, Sochi, Krasnoda, they also were losing it since this kind of school was, did not, uh, does not exist there. National school paid by the state, everyday school that uh, kids can go to. So it has a very special uh, role for them in this uh, preservation of the Armenian community. Um, since 
Um, for example, the, the Armenian MPs uh, at the Armenian Parliament, at the Abkhazian Parliament, they went to Russian schools. They do not speak Armenian, um, and the so they for some of them they they show they showed that they wanted to contribute to preservation of the community uh, by, for example, restoring some monuments, statues, uh, restoring the school, um, things like this. But um, they do not express an opinion at the parliament as Armenians, while they are elected in a in a in a system in a political system that um, that puts forward the idea that uh, you are what your ethnicity is uh, somehow. I hope I'm clear. Um, so uh, that is why for the leaders of the community, if the Armenian kids go to the Armenian schools, they will maybe be Armenian MPs at the Armenian Abkhazian parliament who will represent properly the Abkhazia, um, Armenian community in Abkhazia. Why these are nowadays are Armenian MPs um, they show goodwill, but they somehow also play their uh, seat when they uh, contribute to the preservation of the community. Since they are elected in a, on territories that are constituted of more than 80% of Armenians, so uh, having yes Armenians that speak literary Armenian that are connected to the community that are even connected to the motherland, the Republic of Armenia would play, according to the leaders of the, the community, in favor of the preservation of the community. And that's an aspect of the, 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 the work, my work I didn't uh, tell much about, but this is fundamental to understand uh, how uh, the Abkhazian Armenians mobilize themselves to preserve the community. Y yes. Good question. And, uh, and do they have any university there? Thank you for your question. So, uh, do uh, so. What are the official languages of uh, yeah, the de facto Republic of Abkhazia, and do they have uh, universities? So, the um, the official language of the Republic of Abkhazia is Abkhazian. What, what, what letter? What, what's the alphabet? Sorry. What's the alphabet? The alphabet of the Abkhazian language is. I mean, it changed almost four or five times uh, during history. First, it had a uh, uh, Georgian transcript, then a Cyrillic one, then, uh, Latin, then, then a new Georgian one, and then finally it uh, had a Russian Cyrillic adapted uh, transcript. So uh, I wish I could show it to you. Uh, for example, yeah, you see the up, up above Parigalust. On the, on the sign. This is the Abkhazian alphabet. Russian. Yes, I mean, this is uh, not Russian, this is uh, adapted, yes. The same way than in uh, Central Asia. So, <clears throat> and, uh, so this is, this is the, uh, uh, the official language of the, the Republic, while it's not spoken that, than by more of the quarter of the population of the Republic. And this is uh, part of the, I mean, yes, another aspect of my work I didn't speak about is the fear of disappearance uh, uh, of the Abkhazians. They, their people speak Russian, mainly. They do not speak Abkhazian anymore. That's why they made the uh, official language Abkhazian. That's also why they made this language mandatory in non-Abkhazian schools. That's also why they made this language mandatory for the candidates uh, during their debates, uh, during some uh, events as well. And uh, that's why they made it mandatory to speak for the MPs. Uh, although I think it's still valid today, only 10 to 12 members of the Abkhazian parliament speak Abkhazian. So this is an official language, uh, but at the same time it's not spoken, which is a weird situation. <laughs> uh, I, I would say that what people speak the most is Russian. This is the lingua franca. Uh, this is spoken on the streets, in the shops. This is spoken. This is written on the official documents, on the visas. On the, it's written everywhere. So there is a yes, <clears throat> non official. The official language is Abkhazian. The the common language is Russian. Yes, <clears throat> and yes, they they do have uh, uh, they do have um, universities. 
Actually, Abkhazia during the Soviet Union was famous for its um, agronomy uh, university. Since it was uh, uh, subtrop the subtropical institute of Abkhazia of Sukhumi was uh, famous during the Soviet Union because uh, it was forming people to grow the, 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 the earth um, in a proper way in this subtropical uh, climate, under this subtropical, subtropical climate. It was famous in the, the Soviet Union. And they still have uh, some universities that people go to. Uh, of course, yes. Yes, but it has since, uh, I, f I think, 15 years, it has an Armenian section uh, in, in which uh, people are uh, f uh, formed. I, would, I mean, yes, formed. Yes, they, they are trained to become uh, professors for the Armenian schools. But uh, there are not many candidates, unfortunately, these days. Yes. So uh, thank you for your question. So uh, do, uh, the, do our Georgians have representatives in the Abkhazian parliament? They don't. Uh, they don't have. Initially, after the war, uh, the first president of the Abkhazian Republic, Vladislav Zimba, uh, created an unofficial, uh, uh, non-official uh, rule in the pa Abkhazian parliament, according which each community would have a reserved number of seats. So. Russians would have one, Georgians would have one, Armenians would have three, uh, and other communities would have, I don't remember the exact numbers, but this, is the, this was the spirit of it. So Georgians were supposed to have a seat, to have a, 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 a place uh, in the present society and even in the present, in the present politics. Uh, but nowadays, since they don't have even the right to vote, uh, since they are that marginalized uh, and since there is this whole idea in Abkhazia that they are the fifth column, they are the ones who could potentially uh, destroy the costly uh, acquired uh, independence, they are kept away. They are kept away from Abkhazian politics. Um, and this is also why uh, Abkhazians don't want the, the people who escaped to come back to Abkhazia. There were 250,000 people, 200 uh, 50,000 Georgians uh, were uh, displaced, I mean, they were escaped from Abkhazia. Our Abkhazians nowadays, there are only 125,000. So you could imagine how this, this would be a shift uh, for the demographic uh, balance in Abkhazia. So, and Abkhazians don't want that. They, they want to keep Georgians away. They don't want to Georgians in, into Abkhazian politics. Yes. Um, can you talk more about the relationship between Abkhazia, Armenians, and Armenia of mainland and Sinclair during cultural exchanges? Yeah. Thank you. That's, that's actually an important aspect of, of, the, of the question. Uh, so what are the relations between the Republic of Armenia, even maybe the Republic of Artsakh, uh, and uh, our, our present Armenians? So, um, these are unstable, uh, I mean, when it comes to the relations between Abkhazian Armenians and the Republic of Armenia, these are unstable uh, relations, since Armenia does not recognize the independence of Abkhazia, and since Abkhazia and Armenians fought for this independence, this creates a feeling for the Abkhazian Armenians of uh, being despised someone, be, being uh, not considered. Uh, also, um, Armenia somehow depends on Georgia for trade, for multiple things, and they don't want Georgians to be upset. That's why the Georgians, uh, at multiple times, multiple occasions, uh, told the uh, Armenian authorities uh, not to keep relations with these uh, uh, present Armenians uh, who fought against Georgians. Uh, for example, when it comes to the church, the, uh, the Apostolic uh, Armenian Apostolic Church in Abkhazia. First, uh, so the Abkhazian Armenians did not want this, uh, uh, the Church of Abkhazia, Armenian Church of Abkhazia, to be uh, uh, linked to the Georgian di diocese, uh, the uh, Abkhazian di the Ar Georgian diocese. So they asked the Southern Russian uh, Orthodox Orthodox uh, diocese to be linked to this uh, newly created, I mean. 
I would say, uh, the, the, the Armenian Church of Abkhazia. They got linked to the southern Russian uh, diocese uh, uh, of the Orthodox Church, Russian Orthodox Church. Georgians, Salome Zurabishvili, the president of Georgia, came to, during one visit in Armenia, told directly to the, uh, to the Catholicos that the Georgians were not happy with it. And they wanted to be the Armenian, Abkhazian Armenians to be linked to the Georgian church, Armenian church. And this is also something that uh, shows, uh, I mean, the, the crazy situation for, for this community. Because during the war, they, they fought against the Javak Armenians as well, who were in the Georgian army. The Armenians from Abkhazia fought against Armenians from Georgia. Then it, le it led to a situation in which the Armenians from Abkhazia, Abkhazia hate the Abkhazian from, from uh, Javark, from uh, Georgia. Um, <clears throat> uh, so yes. Um, so what are the story? I, I, I got a far away. But so these are unstable relations, and they there are some programs. For example, the program Aritun. Aritun. Uh, since in 2019, for example, uh, this is, so this is organized by the High Commissionary uh, of the Diaspora Ministry of Diaspora Affairs in Armenia. In 2019, 70 kids from uh, this community in Abkhazia went to Armenia for a cultural trip to discover the motherland, to discover uh, how does Armenia look, uh, to discover the country. But this is not enough for the leaders of the community who feel uh, kept away from uh, Armenia, although they try to preserve this, the same culture, identity than the one uh, promoted in the Republic of Armenia, which is interesting. I mean. So it leads the community to have stronger links to the Republic of Artsakh, with the Republic of Ar Ar Artsakh. And for example, <clears throat> um, Galus Trabizonian, the president of the organization, uh, was going to Artsakh five times uh, a year because they, even he told me that uh, he, the Armenians of Abkhazia had way better relations with the Artsakh Tsis than with the Armenians of Armenia. Uh, because of this, also this question of the status of the Republic, the de facto status, uh, which creates uh, some links. Um, and there are also some musical ensembles going, Abkhazian going to, to uh, Artsakh, Artsakh, Artsakh going to, to Abkhazia to play. But also some people got uh, sent to fight during the, uh, the, the war. For example, some Artsakhsis were sent to fight with Armenians during the war in Abkhazia. In 2016, uh, some um, Abkhazian Armenians were sent to uh, Artsakh to help uh, in the fightings. And uh, in 2020, unfortunately, it didn't work out. Uh, but uh, a regiment of uh, 20 Abkhazian Armenians were sent to, uh, to Artsakh to fight during the war. Uh, and for it uh, only arrived on the 8th of November, so they could not uh, participate in, to, in the war, but uh, there was this will. So to just to, to these relations between Abkhazian and uh, Armenians are way better with Artsakh than with Armenia. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you a lot. Sorry, for those online, if you have questions, since we could not get your questions, you can email us, hq at nasser.org, and we will forward to you. Is that okay? Thank you. Thank you very much.